Hi, this is Jason from Horrific Nightmares, and this is going to be a special review that I'm doing for a really good buddy, Hobbs Horror. Now, if you remember a little while ago, Hobbs, or Santa Hobbs, sent me a Christmas present with some movies in it. Uh, one of the movies that was in that bunch was a movie called Shelmont County Massacre. And Hobbs had said he really wanted to know my thoughts on this one, because I do believe he had reviewed it as well. I can't remember, but I do believe he did. Now, I could have just emailed him and told him what my thoughts were, but I really wanted to do a review on this one because I have some things to say about it. Now, Shelmont County Massacre is a 2018 film which runs approximately 99 minutes. And there is going to be a little bit of a discrepancy in this one. When I looked it up, sometimes when you look things up on IMDb, sometimes they have different names because, of course, films go by other names sometimes. But the one that showed up on here was just called Shelmont. Had the same cover. But it had a different date. Also, a different runtime. So Shelmont was a 2019 film, which runs approximately 92 minutes. Now, I'm not sure if the director is remaking his own film, or if IMDb just kind of got it wrong. They do that a lot, I notice. But the actual information on this film, <laughs> The Shelmont County Massacre, it is a 2018 film, which runs approximately 99 minutes. And it is written and directed by Gus Trampani. Now he worked on the film Absolute Zero and Bad vs. Worst. Now this stars Roderick Kilimek. He was also in Absolute Zero. Matthew Lafferty, which sounds so familiar to me, but I looked him up. And he actually did not show up on the IMDb. And I couldn't really understand that one. But anyway. Uh, Jared Hick Hickey. And this is done by Midnight Releasing. Now, I have a few movies by Midnight Releasing. They are a little bit like Wild Eye. They do a lot of low-budget uh, films. Which I am all in favor for. Um... I love independent horror. I think it's a great way to get their names out into the community. And, you know, every once in a while you come across a gem. And this happens to be one of them. Now, the Shelmont County Massacre has a pretty simple plot. You're dealing with uh, a sheriff and a deputy. And they show their girlfriends... Uh, quite a bit throughout the film. There is a killer wearing a mask, which you see on the cover. This is actually not face paint. This is an actual mask. You do see his face early in the film, but it doesn't really take away from anything because he, he does wear the mask most of the time. Now he wears green overalls with a, I believe it was a white long sleeve shirt. And... Like workman's boots. He is very creepy. He kind of reminds me a little bit like he's going for the Joker kind of aspect of it. But a very nasty Joker. So here's, here's basically what's happening. You have a detective or a sheriff and a deputy. They have an unusual dynamic. They are not related, but the deputy grew up as the sheriff's brother because the sheriff's father, who also was a sheriff in that town, took him in when he was a young child. 
So they are very close. Of course, they always do stuff with their girlfriends, double dates, so on and so forth. In the beginning, they arrest a big-time drug dealer in their town. So that kind of establishes them as... You know, a very good team of sheriff and deputy. Meanwhile, a mass killer is targeting families in their neighborhood and just torturing them and killing them in very, very um, it's rough to watch. It really is. It's rough to watch. So the basic theme of the film is them investigating this murderer throughout the rest of the film and trying to find clues and track him down. That's pretty much all I can get into. Uh, a lot more happens in this film, and it's it's a really, really well-done film. Now I'm going to go with the good and the bad. Uh, I'm going to go with the bad first, because I only really have one con for the film, but it's a pretty big one. Um, the filming in this movie. Now the writer and director knows how to direct, he knows how to get a shot, he does, he directs extremely well. The equipment that he's using is total crap. And it's very jumpy. Um, not sure if you guys uh, know what I'm talking about, but it's almost like when the filming, when you watch a low budget film, and it's almost like they're filming on a uh, cell phone camera. And it's a bit jumpy all the way through. It does take me out of the film a little bit, but the good definitely outweigh the bad in this film. That's a pretty big con, but the the good is... <laughs> the acting in this film is great. Great for a low-budget horror film. I thought that the acting was thoroughly convincing. I found that the people were convincing. Um, the killer, I thought he did a fantastic job. Because you do get to see quite a bit of him. The blood and gore is on point. It is done extremely well. Uh, I think they used the majority of the budget that they had. Which I'm not sure what it was. But they had to have used it for the gore and effects. Uh, this is a gem guys. If you can get past the the camera that they use... And it's such a shame because this is a fantastic film. If you can get past the camera, this is a gem. I almost wish that the director would have had better equipment to use. This is a fantastic film, guys. Um, thank you so much, Hobbs. I really appreciate you sending this to me. And um, I'm really happy that this is in my collection now. So, big thank you to Hobbs or Santa Hobbs, for sending this along. And if you like what you see in here, hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, peace.